You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. I see the world. I see, uh, I, I see so much suffering, wars, pollution, famine, uh, fa famine. Uh, uh, cruelty, abuse, etc., etc., and they keep on going and saying that it is normal. I think it is sick. I was the first one to show to tap into the autonomic nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, and the immune system. Now, if you are able to tap into the immune system uh, to the level of the autonomic nervous system, then you have a much greater control over that what causes disease. Before they asked me to be injected with the E. coli bacteria, same model, they became all sick. 16,134 people. The average all six. And then I came and I what became not sick at all. I want to climb the Kilimanjaro in three days with 26 people uh, uh, with uh, all kinds of uh, diseases like cancer, arthritis, uh, Crohn's disease, ulcer rosas, uh, uh, asthma, and all that in three days in shorts. That's what I said. And then all these doctors, all these physiologists, all these uh, 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 experts in alpinism, uh, they came and said, oh, all these arguments, oh, it's uh, irresponsible, you cannot do this, people are going to die. We didn't do it in three days, we did it in two days, all successful. And the oldest person at the first, in the first ascent was 65 years with four coronary bypasses. And he did it too. She kissed him goodbye and then she jumped from eight stories down. That, uh, that is what she did. And because she was suffering from mental disorder, schizophrenia, manic depression, and the whole psychiatry, the world of psychiatry, to all, through all the injections and pills and this and that. If I would have had that knowledge back then with my wife, then I could have treated her naturally. But I had no power then. But I pledged my uh, uh, oath to my wife. If I'm able to get out of this grief, to get out of where you have been, then I will show the world and all the people who are suffering mentally, I will be able to pass on a natural way yeah. of how to get out of your grief. Boom, we're on. Hey! Yes. Here we are. <laughs> and today's guest, we've got the, the Iceman himself, Wim Hof. Hey, right on, man. How are you, brother? Right on. Yeah, great, great. Yeah, thank you for coming. Yeah. And uh, this is my place, as you see, and uh, I will show you around uh, later. But uh, yeah, yeah, I like your accent uh, a lot. I like the Scotsman's. Yeah. I like the Scotsman and... They say yeah, if you, I take the high road and uh, the look, what is that? <laughs> I don't what even is the know. Low road? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even uh, know. I think I take them both <laughs> to be sure to read yeah. Scotland. Yeah, and I think you know of Scotland. I always thought about it's the heart. Mm -hmm. It's the heart. It's like the bagpipes. When you feel the bagpipes, you have no fear. You feel you can keep on going. Yeah. And that's the way I feel. I want mm. to go to a fearless state of my mind because I'm in the soul. Mm -hmm. That's where I want yeah. to go. You're changing lives, brother. You've done phenomenal things. You've broke over 20 records, world records. You've changed science. You've changed people's opinion of you. You've, you've really went within to make mass changes. Mm. And I love that shit. I'm mm. going to be honest. I totally love that. I've been a massive fan of yourself over the last five years. We do a lot of cold water exposure in Scotland all because of yourself. A lot what? of people struggling with suicide, addictions, people who are battling. You get into the cold water and it takes your pain away for some reason. It's cold as fuck. You lose your testicles, but it's, um, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I have to say, cold water is also good for sex life. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fucking good <laughs> as they say you know but you've done amazing things brother and first of all proud of you but i always go back to the start with my guests where you grew up and 
how it all began? I grew up uh, like I'm, we are here in the Netherlands right now. Netherlands, just the other side of the Northern Sea. That's where I grew up near the uh, German border. One kilometer from the German border, 12 kilometers from the Belgian border. That means the most narrowest place of the Netherlands, 12 kilometers wide. And uh, there I was born of a family of nine, nine kids, mom, pop. And my uh, father, he worked in the mines, so there was very little money. My mother was uh, uh, like a hen on the eggs, always uh, keeping it uh, real. She always said, uh, uh, yeah, uh, act normal, it's crazy enough. And uh, I did that. I, I loved my mother very much. So we had a lot, uh, 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 a little money, but a, a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun because we, uh, we played, all of us, and my mother and my father included a lot of games. Hey, the Highland Games. We got the Lowland Games. There, there is the low road, you know, <laughs> because they say in, in French, they say the Netherlands is the Pays Bas. That is the land low, the lowlands. So, uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. Yeah. That, that, that's it. And, um, and that, uh, I think uh, it served uh, the rest of my life. A loving family. Yeah, yeah, a loving family. You were, you're a twin, but your mom didn't know. Yeah, you were. Oh yeah, the, when I was born, uh, nobody knew that there were no echoscopia uh, instruments, mechanisms, devices. It was all not there, so they uh, um, did not detect another one when my twin brother uh, was born. Uh, he was the child to be born, and the rest was contractions after. And it was not; it was another child. And then they hurried me because it was almost too late, uh, to the operation room. And uh, just before entering into the operation room, my mother, who was a pious mother, uh, naive, but very strong in her convictions and her beliefs, and she said, oh God, let this child live. I will make him a missionary. That's what she said in all her agony in the pain, because they were going to cut into her uh, to get me out. And uh, that fear and that belief pushed me out before I entered into the operation room in the cold of the hall, suffocated almost, purple. And then those words, they must have tattooed upon that little nothing that came out. And it made me different of my twin brother, identical, but I was always seeking for something different, different. Always different. When I was 12, uh, I was into psychology, Hinduism, Buddhism, esoteric disciplines, yoga. And in those times, that was all unknown. Why is that? Because I had a drive I did not know about within myself, but it, it, it colored my life. It, it, it was there and I had to live. I had to go for it. And it took me five years from 12 to nine, uh, 17, when I found cold water in uh, attraction, I was debating and philosophizing again within myself, like I always did. I was a big debater when I was 15, 16, 17. A lot I did. And uh, then I found this attraction to the cold water that day in winter. And then uh, entering into the water, in a Sunday morning, uh, I felt this is it. There is uh, not words, but this is it, is a feeling. It's like tilt, this is electrified, something like that. And I felt powerful playing with the eyes around me, and I felt no pain. That was connection. And that connection brought me back the other day, and it gave me a rush every day, every day since. And very soon I began to find out that deep breathing impacts that, that I, it made me able to stay longer in the freezing water. <sighs> I did that for 25 times every time. And then I became very electrified, carbon dioxide fully out. With the cold, you really go deep. And I could stay for five to seven minutes every day uh, under the ice. 
Was that your like, getaway, Wim? To oh take yeah, to an, another sure. place. How was your? How did treat people treat you at schooling when you were learning uh, yoga and oh, meditation yeah. and breathing? Were you no, I, I always have been a, 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 you know, they call it a black sheep. Mm-hmm. I've been always the black sheep. Now I'm the whitest sheep ever. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Now I can uh, show that everybody, hey man, where that guy began, who was different than anybody else, and now he is, ab- uh, he is able to change science. As a dropout from school. But it all began when uh, I was young. I, was, I always felt uh, different and timid, like within myself and being pushed therein and uh, in my family which was poor like mining uh, my father was a miner and then he became invalid because of hernias he could not work anymore uh, so the money was even smaller and then nine children that is classic disaster if you don't rule well over that but that's my mother my mother was the greatest uh, thing is when you have a little money and you are different, then you have no way to express yourself. You don't know what's happening. But the trauma of my birth had made my stigma, my chains within. My psyche was different. And I did not know how to connect or have control over that. I didn't know uh, what happened uh, at the time of my birth. My mother later told me everything. But when you begin to do differently things because you feel so, then everybody begins to stigmatize you and say, I, uh, uh, he is doing strange things. He's, uh, he's no good. You don't uh, mingle with him. Uh, just keep him outside and all. That, that becomes a real force because you feel like alone. Alone. L- alone. Say. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, um, uh, but I went on anyway. And when I was 17, I uh, lived in Amsterdam in a squatting place. I had no money. Squatting place, uh, no money, just for gas and uh, electricity, like a hundred euro, uh, less than uh, 50 euros a month. I had no uh, wages, no money. I got money there, money there, money there, a little bit here, and working there, things like that. And, but a very happy place. Why? Because it was a building, a squatting place with free thinkers, people who are not into careers and all that. No, they settle there in the, uh, and being together, much more together. The world out there is too individualized, competing, 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 following protocol, following a, a set of regulations instead of living. But uh, there I was, 17, found myself into the water, uh, that uh, Sunday morning, and I fa- felt connection, deep connection. And that deep connection made me go since then, and that is 44 years ago when I started with my uh, uh, ice bathing, going into the cold, finding a deep connection with the physiology in the depth uh, 44 years ago. And that uh, since then, uh, I did it every day. Like this morning, I was 20 minutes here in the, in the barrel. Uh, it's full of ice. Uh, I got a freezer. I may chop the ice, get it in, mingle it. It's a soup. And then it becomes really cold. I go in 20 minutes. I love it. Uh, I, I, I did it. Then I felt this is it. Began to develop very soon. I developed breathing exercises because for the first time, you feel the need to breathe deep. When you go into uh, cold water, it is <gasps> that. That is logical, but we in society, we live shallow, in a shallow breathing because there is no need. There is no uh, uh, forces, environmental stress coming to you. So you learn to just breathe uh, shallow. And that creates a lot of uh, disconnection of the deeper physiology, which is logical. If you don't feed uh, yourself in the depth, then it's not fat. Then it doesn't grow. That is connection. It's all neurology in the end and the hormonal system. Now we know, but before I did not know. I was driven through my trauma from my birth. 
And then I got connection. And then, of course, everybody was saying, that man is crazy. He is going into freezing water in the winter. And he is walking out for hours outside, barefoot in the snow. He's doing all kinds of exercises. He is crazy. This is not normal. Uh, he must be uh, uh, out of his mind and all that. But I just felt good. So whenever you feel good, it's like when you love somebody, even if the whole family, Romeo and Juliet, are against each other making war, they still want to be together. Yeah. I think that's a powerful message as well because I watch so many of your videos, guys like David Goggins, Joe Dispenza, whether he's running 200 miles while, or while you're swimming underwater holding your breath in ice cold waters. Joe Dispenza says he fixed his spine as well. When you actually break it all down, it just comes down to the power of the mind and what you believe up here. Do you think having that trauma from birth and then kind of being the outsider all your life, did, it ever, did you ever question that maybe I am crazy and that I'm, I'm going to take a step back or did it just feel so right for you? You were so connected that I don't give a fuck what anyone says. This is me, accept me, or get the fuck out my way. Yeah, uh, exactly. Get the, get the fuck out of my way, but let the love come in. And the love came in. And it, it, uh, uh, the only thing that made sense to me, when I was 12, I made a pledge to myself. I see the world, I see, uh, I, I see so much suffering, wars, pollution, Famine, uh, fa famine, uh, uh, cruelty, abuse, etc., etc., and they keep on going and saying that it is normal. I think it is sick. So I pledged there within myself, deeply within myself, I'm going to do something about it. What? I did not know. But I followed it. So, and I kept on being so different and so suppressed because of that. And now look at where the world is. In full of confusion, it's polluted. And wh what is what we, we don't have love because what we give to our children is production, not nature. Production, not health. Production, not happiness. Production and more and exploiting at the cost of others. And that is not love. So we don't love our children because we are forced to be in a system that is uh, 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 getting a uh, parasiting upon our energy and we don't know, no longer know what is a real love, the purpose of life anymore. And that, that, this is the crisis within the world. And I tell you, because me talking like this, everybody was saying, yeah, he's a hippie or something. And, uh, and then I said, okay, let the scientists come. Hey, I will show that I can beat disease. I can show how to beat inflammation. I can show how to beat that what causes depression. I can beat all these things. I can uh, train the best of the world to become better within one week than the ceiling where they have been being the best in the world, like Olympics, MMA fighters. Uh, they all come and within a week, I make them better. Why? Because we always lived uh, according a certain kind of uh, uh, thinking, paradigm, uh, uh, which has come from the schools. And in the schools, they teach you about history, about language, about mathematics, but they should actually teach our children to be happy and strong and healthy. And that is the core and the essence and we've, uh, they forgot about it, and they don't know about it. And I'm a dropout of school, but I change science fundamentally. I will, because it doesn't make sense. Yeah. The schooling is kind I don't believe in the schooling, the curriculum at school, because you're told to sit at a desk from nine to three years old, and then you go into an office, nine to five, you're oh, there 60 years. Yeah. You should be about love, compassion, yoga, meditation, breathing techniques, how to handle money, relationships, even death. We don't get spoken, we don't speak about death enough because when someone dies, it spirals us out of control. We, uh, we then mask it with alcohol, drugs, whatever it is, overeating, anger, is to try and understand that this is life, shit does happen, but we are in control and how we handle it afterwards. Life can be beautiful. 
yep. the prime example. We're mm. all we're all a bit little loopy. Every every single person is, and people who judge and call you crazy, that's the ones who really need the love because then it's a reflection of image. People get scared of other people's success. People get scared of how far other people can go to the extremes. So they then question it, why can't I do that? But everybody can, no matter if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 70s or 80s, whatever age you are, you can make changes to better your life, to make better, become a better person, to make the people around you become better. Life is beautiful. Don't get me wrong, it's a little fucked up. I do have my moments where I think, what the fuck is this about? What am I doing here? But... I know what I'm doing is creating awareness, having men like yourself on is creating more mm. awareness and yes, it's beautiful and for what you've achieved is, is second to none but this is only the beginning because you always raise the bar, you always set new heights to keep proving people wrong and I think that's where you strive more when people say that you can't do it. So when you started going through your transition at 17 and understanding the ice is where I, I feel alive, what was the process of your life like then after that? After, <clears throat> I just began to do this. That, that makes me feel good. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I will keep on doing. It's like they say, you are a donkey. <laughs> I don't feel, I don't feel the ears. <laughs> I don't feel a tail. <laughs> and what I do makes me feel good. Uh, so I think you also, maybe sneakingly or whatever, you do what, you, uh, what makes uh, uh, you feel good. Only it could collide with the regulations. It could collide with the way we are taught to be. That that could be a collide with there with. But my thing is, what I do is like natural drugs. If you go into the cold, the cold is my teacher. It's merciless but righteous, and it gives me all the energy afterwards. It trains my cardiovascular system which is a hundred thousand kilometers inside every body of us. Killer number one in our society's cardiovascular related diseases still. And how can you tackle it? I say, just keep it simple. Cold shower a day keeps the doctor away. But back then, I just felt it. From uh, I was 17, I did uh, all the cold practices every day, every winter. And then uh, at a certain moment, I was doing five to seven minutes under the ice, uh, breathing exercises, they really brought me into the depth. And then I discovered uh, the, the secrets of our neurology, the electricity system of ours, the nervous system, and how to work with it. All uh, what they talk about in these esoteric books of the yoga, of the chakras, and the mystical ways and all. I, when I was reading it, yeah, I don't get any of it because I don't experience it. It's there. It must be somewhere. Oh, 20 years of uh, training. No, it took me a couple of months to get really into myself, into the deepest, into all the lights, all the chakras, all the mysticism. And from there, of course, that practice, I never let go. I always practiced. I always did that. And then I combined with stretching like uh, uh, splits and uh, staying w uh, a whole night outside in shorts in wintertime. Just finding out, following my feeling. And uh, brought me when I was 23 or 22, I met my wife, uh, my future wife. And that uh, she was, yeah, not only pretty, she was uh, amazingly vivid and very expressive and talkative and uh, just a beautiful being. You fall in love and you fall and you keep on falling and you want to go and you fly. That's where I met her. And a year later, uh, 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 she was gone first, uh, three quarters of a, a year. And then we met again. And uh, from there, a uh, 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 year we lived without sex, and then suddenly, boom! There, in four times, uh, uh, four times sex, I had my oldest son. Yeah, probably uh, know him through the mail or something. <laughs> but he is now working with me. With that woman, I only had fifty times sex during fifteen years. That is very little. Why is that? that? Is, why? Because it was enough. Connection. It, a connection was bloody there. 
and it's not based in uh, uh, too much sex or porn or this or that. It was fulfilled in what, what, whatever way it was. It was. I had four children with her. Within the 50 times sex, four children. And that was good. I felt always full. Uh, uh, later, uh, I had uh, different relationships. I had sex every day, mm -hmm. so, three times a day. <laughs> hey, man, I'm a, I can, uh, whatever I feel, I follow. Yeah. So 15 years I was with that woman until the day when she jumped from uh, after kissing her uh, uh, four children goodbye uh, uh, from the age of uh, uh, seven to 12 years. Uh, 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 she kissed him goodbye, and then uh, she jumped from eight stories down. That, uh, that is what she did. And because she was suffering from mental disorder, schizophrenia, manic depression, and the whole psychiatry, the world of psychiatry, to all, through all the injections and pills and this and that, because it was declining uh, a mental state uh, of years before like uh, uh, 10 years after our, uh, 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 we had four children, and then 10 years after the first uh, uh, was born, uh, 30, no, 31, the decline began. Uh, she went to the doctors, etc. cetera, and nobody could help her. And, and there, that is a very important point in my life because I lost a, lo a love of my life, the mother of my children, the one with whom I uh, sh uh, should have been all my life. Uh, she went away. I was broken inside, but I had no time nor to heal, nor to sit there with my grief because I had four children, very little money uh, left behind. There, uh, there, there I was. And uh, I always say my children made me survive. Uh, the cold healed me because the cold, the intense pain of going into freezing water makes you shut up in your mind makes you survive that was the only moment i got stillness in my mind only possibility to get uh, 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 peace in my mind and that uh, uh, that broke the loop that broke the loop of the uh, uh, of the grief of the grieving and uh, thus i began to regain myself became very energetic a lot of energy I became papa and mama from uh, 35 years uh, on, that is 26 years uh, uh, ago. And uh, yes, uh, 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 um, a lot of energy yeah. with the kids, being little money mm -hmm. and uh, trying. I began to ride, began to garden, began to become a, a mountain gu a gu a guide. I did, uh, uh, and, and there the challenges came. And when the challenges came, I said to the television, who came to me first, uh, through a radio, I uh, know, a newspaper article uh, where I said, yeah, I go into the ice all the time because I love it and I love do exercising and all this. Nobody believed it and they got it into the newspaper. And then television came. And television is crazy because they begin to challenge you. So when they challenged me, I could do everything. I got 26 world records, but numerous more challenges done. And they uh, are all uh, led to the... Uh, extremes of what a mind and a body is able to do, even past what in science was thought possible, physiologically possible. So uh, I did all these television shows, the National Geographic Discovery Channel, uh, uh, and more and more and more. I don't know, I, uh, I probably have done uh, 50 to 100 uh, documentaries now. Uh, from BBC to the uh, uh, 2020 to uh, National Geographic, whatever. I did it all. But and now they are going to make a Hollywood uh, film yeah, next year. Love it. Uh, on top. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, why is that? That is because mm. I gained to something. In, uh, in uh, t three years ago, I was in Detroit in the, in the brain scans. And uh, they gave me uh, cold water upon the skin. I could do nothing. Just use my mind. And I made the skin temperature not going down. That is the power of the mind make, having physical consequences in the body to defy stress coming in, just using the mind. This was unknown in psychiatry. If I would have had that knowledge back then with my wife, then I could have treated her naturally. But I had no power then. But I pledged my 
uh, an oath to my wife. If I'm able to get out of this grief, to get out of where you have been, then I will show the world and all the people who are suffering mentally, I will be able to pass on a natural way uh. of how to get out of your grief, how to bring your uh, a spouse or husband out of there and be a good parent. Yeah, was that your breaking point then? Well, when when you lost the love of your life, thinking you could have went two ways, either went the same way, easy, easy, or I'm going to push myself to the extreme limits. Now, I do a lot. I read, I listen to a lot of audio books. I, lo I watch a lot of inspirational people. When you actually break it all down, they have all s felt severe trauma where they think, "Fuck it." and just push herself to the extreme limits. I don't know if that's to maybe block out some of the pain still. Yeah, sure. Or to maybe find oh, yeah. the answers. How is it now for you to, when you know the information and looking back thinking, because I believe pharmaceutical kill more people than any other oh, drug yeah. in the world. So how does it feel now knowing that you know some answers to help change the mindset to control your temperature? Some people have cured cancer. Some people have cured depression, addictions, through cold water exposure. Now you have this information, how does it feel looking back thinking that people are getting lied to to take this, but yet your wife still committed suicide? First of all, that's what I say as well. Sorry you know, for your uh, loss. you come from Scotland, yeah, and I know that uh, you know the, the film with uh, Mel Gibson, Braveheart. who's a who's a, an Australian. You know, uh, give me back my son or, or uh, the freedom yeah. in Scotland, and we fight uh, all, all those things. This is what what happens when a when a, 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 a simple man is being uh, broken down uh, and has to kneel for it all for the train of every day keep on going while he lost his wife to uh, and why why and uh, 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 and he could not do anything a man like that can be uh, the, he can be uh, uh, touched so deeply that he is going to find the answers, the whole uh, world of psychiatry and medical care and the whole system is incapable of. And that is not science through uh, uh, schooling, because I'm a dropout, but I'm teaching psychiatrists, doctors, professors all over the world. Why? Because I had a genuine uh, broken heart. I had a genuine uh, simple mind just to be happy and strong and healthy and take care of my children. And this, they didn't let me. The society didn't let me. And it has no name and it has no person. You cannot talk to it, but it is still ongoing. So I did something about it. And how? I did not know. But I began to rise and began to walk my steps little by little by little. And when the television came, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you climb Mount Everest in your shorts? Can you swim under the ice uh, big distances? Can you run a marathon uh, beyond the polar circle? I can do it all. Because uh, compared to a grieving heart, it is nothing. Yeah, powerful stuff, brother. So when you, because you went to Kilimanjaro and you took people who were ill, People who could hardly walk and stuff, and you amazing what, what I can hours. teach now. Yeah, how long did it take to teach them to do to go this walk? Just with four you? afternoons. <laughs> imagine, imagine. Uh, 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 take the comparison. What physiologically is possible in mountaineering, and uh, say the Kilimanjaro, which is almost six kilometers high, takes about five to nine days, fully dressed with a lot of layers because it's very cold up there. Yeah. And then still it takes five to nine days and then only 40% will succeed. Summit. Yes. Those are the numbers. We did it. And uh, uh, we did it in 20 and a half hour, uh, hours. That is four and a half hours more than one day in short. And wait a minute. And not only me, the oldest participant, Without former experience in mountaineering, suffering from Lyme's disease, he did it in 31 hours in his shorts. He has no Lyme's disease anymore. He has a deep uh, connection inside. He used his mind consciously and his breathing. And he did it. 76 years old, suffering from Lyme's disease. In shorts, 
No former experience in mountaineering. He did it. He's healing a lot of people with Lyme's disease right now because he found this deep connection. How many days did I train with him? Four afternoons. And I say, you better do your homework. That means you do some running and uh, you go uh, and challenge yourself. Follow your feeling because the Kilimanjaro is going to come. Yeah. And it's going to kill you. It's going to torture you if you didn't do well within your homework. And they all understood. Yeah. It was not only here where people with cancer, there were people with Crohn's disease, arthritis, with asthma, with depression. All one thing in common they had. That was motivation, that there is more than meets the eye. Mm -hmm. And they all did it. Amazing. So why do you think, well, what's your opinion? Why do you think depression's on the rise, addictions, um, suicide, heart attacks is on the rise, cancer's on the rise? It's logical. So, suicide, for example. A lot of people want to commit suicide. They alienated so much of their own life force. They are like not living. Something is pulling them out of the uh, consciousness, the awareness of their own life force. This is the way our society got us into televisions, into cars, into traveling, into always out, 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 out. Hey Amen. Inside there is an unconditional power that makes you not need anything or need very little. That inner peace exists. It's no longer a mystical experience. It is, but it's not far away. It is here and now. And here we got it. And the margin therein is enormous. You can keep the bullshit really out of you. Because we did the science now. We did the science and showed how to connect with the depth of our brain. And once you are able to go into the deepest of the brain consciously, then where else can you not go? Yeah. We have not learned how to own our own mind. And now we bring this to the people. And you do this through this platform, through the urge, the instinctive urge to bring a, a life itself to the people and remember them through very interesting people all over the world who have gone their mile, past their fear, into the unknown, which should be known. Because mysticism is not about thinking, it's about feeling. And you should feel tremendously good every day, because that's who you are by birthright. So uh, there we are, bringing it here. Like in the beginning of the conversation, was, hey, man, man, we have no structure. We have no protocols. We don't follow a question number one question. It pops up. And we just go with our thinking into this mystical experience where there is no thinking, where all the answers are there. So no questions anymore. Go with the flow. Go with the flow. <laughs> yes, sir. So when, you, when the TV started coming along, newspapers, magazines, radio... Did they ever try to embarrass you at the start or ridicule you? Oh, yeah, in the beginning, of course. They called me the uh, oh, yeah, the, the, the ice rabbit <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, before that, the crazy man mm -hmm. and uh, an idiot. And uh, one who's uh, uh, he's, uh, shouting out so much is uh, all uh, not, not good. They tried, many of them. Uh, all, uh, okay. let, let me tell you, uh, this is a story that exemplifies the way it was. So I sat out in public saying, I want to climb the Kilimanjaro in three days with 26 people uh, uh, with uh, all kinds of uh, diseases like cancer, arthritis, uh, Crohn's disease, ulcerosis, uh, uh, asthma, and all that in three days in shorts. That's what I said. And then all these doctors, all these physiologists, all these uh, 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 experts in alpinism, uh, they came and said, oh, all these arguments. Oh, it's uh, irresponsible. You cannot do this. People are going to die. It takes five to nine days. And a uh, fully dressed, uh, if you have no clothes, it's too cold up there. There is no oxygen. In less than half, people are going to die, especially people with uh, cancer and, uh, and arthritis. Uh, what, what are you doing? Irresponsible. We are not going to link with this expedition whatsoever. 
Don't do it. Arguments, arguments, arguments. We didn't do it in three days. We did it in two days. All successful. And the oldest person at the first, in the first ascent was 65 years with four coronary bypasses. And he did it too. Mm -hmm. Amen. When I came back in the Netherlands, I did not hear anybody. And there is really no problem with my hearing. When I went back in the Netherlands, I did not hear any of those doctors who had millions of arguments why it was uh, 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 to show why it was all not good and irresponsible uh, based on scientific arg uh, uh, arguments and, and, and logic. And now I did not hear them. They at least could have sat and asked, how did you pull it off? This is unknown. This is amazing. Of course, those arguments are legit. But what you guys have done must be then outside of what is scientifically discovered. Because 65 years old, four coronary bypasses, going in three days in shorts up Kilimanjaro to six kilometers. Cancer and Crohn's disease and arthritis. Oh, the joints. So, no, they felt great. At least they could have asked, how did you pull it off? Possibly there are a, a number of answers of what we are capable of and what we do not know in science up till now to solve problems which we have, like arthritis, Crohn's disease, ulcerosa, coronary bypasses, cancer. We don't know the answers. And here you go with them and do it in record time into the unknown, because it was not known before. I said three days, it became two days in 48 hours. That was the first ascent I did with a group of people. And that's the way people are. When I, then you come back and you show that all those arguments do not count in that, then you really rumble the foundations of their beliefs. Then they become uh, fearful. Then they are not able to, uh, to, to, to get you. So uh, uh, that's what I found did, out. Did no one ever come forward to apologize and say, sorry no. for calling you crazy. No. I'm sorry for doubting your methods. Exactly. No. no one. And uh, there How is did more. that make you feel? Ah, uh, man, th this makes me. Does that give you the fire uh, to keep pushing forward? Exactly. Yes, of course. Of course, and I will keep on. I know my enemy. My enemy is, is ignorance. Ignorance and a, 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 a careless being. And I don't, will not succumb to it. I'm not attacking it. I think people have a, a rightful a, a right to be that way if they like to. I just keep on going to uh, show a non-dogmatic uh, 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 a scientifically endorsed uh, method that makes uh, people able to reach their deeper self no matter what. Uh, really endorsed by experience, science, and, uh, and sense. And th there I am, there I stay. I know now my enemy. I know my enemy will f backfire at me first or attack me. And then when I prove them wrong, they will be not there. Because they flee like the rats. Yeah. Because that's the real, true nature that's what of we, that. Yeah, that's what beast. weak people do, though. Do you become a threat then, Wim? See, for uh, the man who's changing science, for the man who's creating nature to be your medicine to help cure people, help people. When you were getting injected by a virus, did you ever question that? What if they were trying to kill you or what if people were out to get you? Because potentially you could become a threat for the pharmaceutical companies who make billions per year, yeah. trillions. So I think they, they are cowards. You, uh, they are cowards and they got maybe yeah. money, but they are cowards by themselves. But did you ever question you that? Yeah, of course I did. Uh, the first time I was on television, <laughs> National Report, like the journal of the day, saying uh, I was the first one to show to tap into the autonomic nervous system, the autonomic nervous system and the immune system. Now, if you are able to tap into the immune system uh, to the level of the autonomic nervous system, then you have a much greater control over that what causes disease. 
So I possibly at that moment was a great danger. Not anymore because now millions of people, you got to kill millions of people doing this method now. And, uh, 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 and that's it. Uh, but back then, I was the first one to show in medical history to tap into the autonomic nervous system in, and immune system. That means the perspective of what we as humans at will are able uh, uh, against a, d a disease has completely changed. That means a lot of clients will go the, uh, from the pharmaceutical uh, dependency. It will go there from, and I tell you, we are the future now, and the future should be sane. And even the pharmaceuticals are people. So if they have a real sense of, uh, uh, oh yeah, we are here to heal people, that's why we make a medicine, I heal people. I don't need medicine. Maybe medicine still exists, and all the, uh, say, orthopedic uh, instruments and things like that, we can't or cannot do all, but I go for all. I think nature has got the answers. I found a way, and I'm uh, now working with the top researchers in the world on the DNA to show that the building stones of life itself, we are able to influence, which was considered to be not done. Back then, the first time, when I was on the journal, the other day, I drove with my a road with my bicycle through Amsterdam, and there I got this image, this image that there is a man there on on the, on the roof, and he pops, poop, and look, uh, <laughs> that's a drunk man on the street, mm -hmm. and then the uh, so-called uh, paramedics, not the real ones, uh, uh, just a scheme. The man in black. Yeah, the man in black, and uh, uh, and uh, they just throw me in a, in a car and ditch me somewhere and he he was gone he is gone and that's it they should have done that yeah. that that moment but not anymore because now too far gone i'm, I, yeah. I'm too far gone i'm like a a, a, a virus in the a, but in this case a, a positive one yeah you got to kill it in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> it's just spread. It is spread all yeah, over. Yeah. So how does that make you feel then, knowing that now it's scientifically proven that you are changing lives, you are creating the chemistry in your body, changing the temperature, changing the neurons and pushing yourself to the limits. When you also got the virus, when you got the bacteria injected into you. E. coli. Yeah, what was the method behind this? Yeah, this is called a endotoxemia experiment mental uh, model in science to get to know more and uh, to get gain more knowledge over what is the immune system in uh, people. Can we get more knowledge, more uh, control? And so they did 16,134 uh, uh, test subjects uh, experimented with the endotoxin. Endotoxin is an E. coli, part of an E. coli bacteria. E. coli bacteria causes nausea, uncontrolled shivering, had severe headaches, severe uh, uh, back aches, muscle aches, all over agony and fever, ultra vomiting. Yeah, it's, it, uh, and in this experimental model, they, uh, you become sick for three to six hours. That's it. But so 16,134 people before they asked me to be injected with the E. coli bacteria, same model, they became all sick. 16,134 people. They average all six. And then I came and I became not sick at all. Not sick. But then they said, but you are the Iceman. You have trained your body so different, uh, even your eyes uh, accomplishments, uh, they are impossible to do in our uh, physiology, the way we see that as medics. But you are doing it because you are an anomaly. You are outside, you're superhuman, you know, whatever you are, you are not uh, representing the humans uh, as it is in the physiology. And I said, no, everybody is able to do this. And then they said, finally, they said, okay, let's have a group and see that would, uh, 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 would be ground breaking.
and never been shown in medical history how to enter into the immune system and enter into the autonomic nervous system. Uh, that is unprecedented. So, but they got, got the curiosity because I did it. I showed, I showed the blood results and the diagrams and everything. The graphics completely different of the chart. So then they gave me a group and another group, a control group, who did, the, uh, 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 did my training within four days. When they came in uh, the hospital receiving the E. coli bacteria, and this once again is after 16,134 people having uh, all, uh, uh, becoming all sick, severely sick for three to six hours. My group of 12 people trained in four days, no, 100% score, no sickness, no disease, no symptoms, all low. And then they looked inside the blood and they saw them all within a quarter of an hour after the injection of E. coli bacteria, which causes deep inflammation, which is the same with COVID-19, by the way. And we I have checked the numbers of the damaging factor of the COVID-19, which is interleukins, inflammatory markers. Those are number one, number six, number eight, and number 11 are responsible for the damage. And those are, it all begins with symptoms. Now, within a quarter of an hour, the, uh, those 12 were able to bring down the inflammation caused by the E. coli bacteria. See what we can do with the COVID-19. We don't need vaccines. We need proper breathing. So that's how you beat it then from breathing techniques? Yes, sir. I did, we do a lot of breathing techniques in um, Scotland, me and my friend Gerald and James. Sometimes when I done the breathing techniques, though, I felt as if I was getting angry. Was that because, is that triggering a lot of stuff? Oh, within? yeah, yeah, man. Do I need to push through that? Biochemical. It's all yeah. biochemical. And uh, we talked a little bit before this conversation about DMT. The, uh, the DMT, dimethyltryptamine, which is a deep drug inside of our head through the breathing techniques, you are also able to activate that. So whatever is the trauma inside dimethyltryptamine is there to solve it, to go to the trauma and whatever that was, doesn't matter. Anger is another one. But in the end, if you go back, it's biochemical. It's all biochemical neurotransmitters suddenly being released, uh, 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 making you angry. Uh, 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 serotonin makes you feel nice. Dopamine makes you feel great. Wow, nice. Uh, it's all drugs, man. It's inside. And we are able to tap into that pharmacy, which is in our head, connected to the whole of the body. Yeah. Once you know how to, when you take an a, a acid, you know, a trip, a, 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 it's just a little, little thing. Mm -hmm. No, it's only a trigger. But now through the breathing uh, techniques, uh, right, uh, uh, righteously done, you are able to trigger the uh, area of the amygdala, of the hippocampus, of the periaqueductal, uh, etc. All those great places where the pharmacy of ours is existent but we have never learned how to connect with our will with that and now i found ways i found ways driven by my wife going down eight stories down through the grief i had to handle and learn how to deal with my own grief because i had to serve four children that is my drive that is the way i use my drugs to heal myself and now i know how to heal others, others to bring others to the same ability to trigger themselves into the depth. So when you, whenever you feel anger or this or that, man, it's coming to the surface. Now keep on doing the breathing because the nature of your biochemistry and your will is to heal, to work it out. And it should be done within 10 minutes, a quarter of an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We spoke about ayahuasca earlier. I'd done an ayahuasca documentary. A lot of people asked me about it, but I'm still unsure about it because I just felt, I believe changes can be made within. I believe a lot of people has been through more trauma than me, but still do a lot better than me in life, that are more happier than me. There was a documentary that we were supposed to do next year. It was to be in a dark room for seven days, just pure darkness, all black. They says when you're in the room for 
after three, four days, the brain will release the DMT, and that's the natural chemical. Exactly. Without taking it externally. Yes. It's um, a powerful one, this. I never really knew much about it until a few months ago when I seen somebody else doing it in a dark room, seven days, just pure darkness, and then you eventually see life's true purpose. Whoa. Some deep, deep shit. Whoa. But that's natural. That's not drinking teas. and No, no, I believe you. I believe you yeah, completely. So yeah, yeah, you I'm got it. Try this next year. Yeah, that that's great. And I just did, a, apparently, uh, people around me did a documentary with my techniques and uh, naming it, uh, yeah, Wim Hof this and that, da, 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 uh, together with uh, 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 Strassman. Professor Strassman, who is the expert on DMT in the uh, in the world, uh, among that uh, ayahuasca and ibogaine and psychedelics like that, that triggers the deeper uh, images in the subconscious. Mm -hmm. And now uh, you are talking about the darkness. That yes, that uh, that is a way because our daily our eyesight is taking a lot of energy. So mm -hmm. it, 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 if that is going on then the deeper part of your brain is uh, is consumed all the energy gets into the eyesight but if you close your eyes and you do that long enough then then that energy it's not consumed anymore it goes to the deeper areas of the brain yeah. and then it is able to release now through these breathing techniques we are able to bring energy into those areas we have seen in brain scans in uh, Germany, in Hanover, uh, do, people doing these breathing techniques, making the, uh, not 16% at will of the brain uh, activated, but 100. 100. 100% 100 neural activity through doing these breathing techniques. That means that all the parts in our brain suddenly are nourished. And that means that the nature of our mind is to solve things, not to be in a narrowed mind, uh, a consciousness of the mind, which is only capable of, yeah, being having a lot of our brain on standby. No, when you have deep trauma, and this is what we sh should teach the children in school, to never get accumulating trauma and to st have it stay there for 30 years or 40 years, consuming or, 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 or blocking the quality of your life, the depth of your life, and influencing it for the bad. And it's, it's like something is stored. It, it wants to come out. Mm -hmm. So we never knew the ability. And now we found through these breathing techniques, if you, whenever you feel, uh, 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 that, that there is shit going on, deep shit, and you do not even know it, but you suspect it to be, get into the breathing. Yeah. Get into the breathing, get 100% score, uh, 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 neural activity done. It happens, it happens. Mm -hmm. They have compared these breathing techniques with the result in the brain scan uh, uh, to see what kind of activity and uh, what areas of the brain are uh, being activated. Yeah. So people doing this breathing for yeah. 10 minutes, they activate deeper parts of the brain than people doing four hours of mindfulness for years. So the shit works, mm -hmm. but you have to make it work within yeah. yourself. And we are built to be able to tap into the deepest of our brain Anytime, anytime yeah. when it's needed. Sometimes when there is danger, we uh, we get a shock. Something is happening, and it's a, a, a confusion, a, the, the short circuit, and the trauma. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you can cannot handle that in that dangerous situation. You are able to uh, get out of the situation, and then you should be able to get into the trauma and work it out. But we have never learned how to do that, and now we found this way and this i want again i'm into the studies with the people who are doing uh, work on uh, the top researchers on the dna and on, on depression it's now going to get to the outer so everybody is able yeah. to see that we found the keys but you got to open the door as yourself as human beings though when we don't like to feel uncomfortable. We don't like to feel pain, so we just mask it even more. We, we, we just wrap ourselves around like an onion and just, we don't want to feel no more pain. So mm. for people who are maybe are struggling and, and need, how do you, do you need to face the pain to heal it? Do you need to accept it? Yes, but there is no force involved. You can yeah. go gradually 
and uh, we have innate capacities. We are born with them uh, to deal with whatever comes to us. So uh, the, the, the last explanation was quite good. Like, uh, I never explained it this way. But it comes out because this is a new conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice conversation, by the way. It's a good one. It's common sense. And here we get into issue solving where psychiatrists still are groping, <laughs> groping in the dark. They still need some DMT to understand yeah. that the shit is in mm -hmm. and not in analytics and, and this and pills and injections. It's all not. It's inside, inside, inside. So we have the capacity to take on trauma when something really bad happens to us and still get out of the situation which caused it. That is the danger. We get into the brainstem when the danger happens, adrenaline comes, and the trauma to our person, because it was all uh, too overwhelming, we could not understand, it shattered uh, our belief and everything. It's uh, really too much. It's like an imprint and bang, inside. You can't do anything then to receive it. But you still have the ability to get out. And then you should be able to work it out. And uh, for that, we got these breathing techniques. And these, uh, when I got people, people begin to cry, to yell. Uh, they see faces. They are all, all kinds of things. And what am I? I'm a simple man who has come from a, a suicide of his wife, whom he loved with four children, and they're being left alone. I just tried to get out of that hole, out of that trauma. And that taught me something that is not in the books. And now I teach the psychiatrists and I show the brain scans that we have a much greater possible control at will to tap into our brain and to deal with the trauma, whatever it is. Yeah. When did you start getting the recognition? Well, when, when did you start feeling that okay, what I'm doing is right, because you must have questioned that yourself, even though it felt right for you, you must have felt, what if I'm fucking crazy, what if I'm doing is wrong, because I still question everything, I'm in a good place, I'm drink yeah. free, I'm drug free, I'm gambling free, it feels right for me, but sometimes I question it, that, yeah. what if I'm talking shit, yeah. what if everything I'm oh, doing no, I'm talking that, shit, when did you start getting the recognition that this man is yes. pushing himself to limits and creating mass changes in the world? That, that it is, that it is, uh, James. Um, thing is, I never questioned really myself. And even though uh, I was considered to be a crazy man, an idiot and, uh, and all, all these things, I kept on doing what I was doing because what I was doing was not based on thinking, on pondering or philosophizing. It's just going into the bloody ice cold water for too long a time according to the ph physiological laws. And then I found uh, deeper realities, logical, because I had to survive. And I felt I could survive. And I'm an investigator of life. I think everybody in nature, in this spiritual nature, is an investigator to see what life really is all about. And, but we lost this connection through all this schooling and uh, too much thinking, thinking, thinking. But I was not, uh, my feelings were not based in thinking. It was uh, out of practice, going every day like I go to my love. I go to my practice. And that for 44 years, I've been doing that without questioning myself, ever. And then people say that I'm crazy. Man, I'm, st I'm sitting here uh, uh, an hour in, in cold water. And you, with your scarf and, and, and ten layers, uh, <laughs> you are saying that I'm crazy. It, it, this, this much, it, it goes. Uh, I went to school uh, with my uh, 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 young kids, primary school. And I went to school uh, uh, in wintertime. In shorts, it's freezing in, in the Dutch winters. It's like Scotland. It's freezing. So you go, I, I went uh, like, uh, I say, make of your winter a summer. So act like this uh, summer and then you are done. That's the philosophy. The rest is doing. So you do it. You go in shorts, open sandals, a T-shirt to school. And I, I was doing handstands in the schoolyard, waiting for the kids to come out, splits, jumping around, being alive. And the people at the side, 
the parents so smoking. So oh, he's crazy. He is crazy. <laughs> he is crazy. And my children then they told me, Pop, act normal, act normal. Act normal, act mm -hmm. normal. Mm -hmm. I said, no, no, no. I said, I, I, I kept on doing it because it felt good. I felt strong, had no money, just felt strong and happy. I needed no money. I just needed to be the way I was. And that uh, finally uh, resulted uh, into uh, the uh, groundbreaking for for the science yeah. and i flabbergasted all the tv world and now they are going to make a hollywood film yeah. about this and you know what the beautiful thing they're gonna make uh, in the uh, hollywood film is not only to show that a simple man is able to uh, uh, make groundbreaking changes in medical understanding and science uh, not only uh, the pharmaceutical industry, the way it works upon our physiology and uh, psychology, and, uh, and then ph physiology, of course, is so that, that uh, uh, natural methods uh, of, of one person, they, they don't come through. Even when I went in 2014 to scientists and show for the first time in medical history how to tap into the autonomic nervous system and immune system, both, but not a little bit, big time, mm -hmm. and then showing it uh, with 12 people, uh, uh, publishing in the best of papers of the world, and then, uh, and, uh, and then they don't take it up yeah. because the industry doesn't make money. Mm -hmm. What I do doesn't make money. And let me uh, uh, tell this to the viewers. To the viewers, let me tell this to the viewers. Guys, you got it all. Make sure you get it all. You get it mm -hmm. all. Change isn't easy. Guys like Einstein, Edison, yourself have changed the world. It isn't easy. People laugh, people ridicule. How did that affect your kids when you were doing all that stuff and they were growing up, even though you were doing the right thing? It felt right for you, but everybody else in their small oh, box yes. made you feel crazy, made your kids feel as if the dad was a weird one, when really they're smoking, drinking, yeah. taking drugs, yes. probably fucking around. Yeah. For me, how did that affect you and the kids? How did that affect the kids? Yes, there's, uh, uh, right now, those uh, daughters... You know, daughters are uh, extremely sensitive. Yeah, I have a daughter too. Uh, uh, so, you know, yeah. uh, at that age. And now they have become instructors in the uh, method that bears their father's name. And they are both graduates from university and everything. One has done psychology, the other one did two masters. And they are, uh, they are kind of bright girls in society. But they, they know now. That, that what happened before is the bullshit going on yeah. right now. And what we are really all about, they, they love their workshops because they see people change. They, see, they feel people change. And it all comes back. It's so much healing, so much love going on. And this, this of course, yeah. they, they had a shattered belief about love because their mother jumped from eight stories down. But now we're in the psychiatry. In, uh, my daughter is a psychologist. In psychiatry, I went with her to Detroit, Wayne State University, and I showed in the brain scans to go so deep at will into the brain, which was uh, unprecedented deep. And then the professors, they told, uh, 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 this is a transformational technique that will change mental health care. That is number one. That is big already. Man, I'm talking mental disorders, any kind, any kind. At least ask yourself, is this possible, what he is saying? What, what it is, must be full of shit. Check me out, please. Check me out. And, and if you then find the answers through what you have been checking out, just through objectivity, then help those who need it. Yeah, it's funny though, a lot of pressure from the outside noise and other people can put you back into your very small box. And if you didn't, this is why it's important for people watching. Consistency is key. If you believe in something it's... so much and you don't care, if you're not, as long as you're not hurting anyone, then stay true to you, stay true to your passion. I think people can get caught up in relationships, jobs, and think that's the final piece of the puzzle in life. And realistically, they've stopped working on themselves. 
this is why I think people struggle so much because they're not fulfilling that potential that they have, the greatness to make changes in the world. You've changed the exactly. world. Exactly. Anybody can do it. And that's yep. such a powerful thing. Hey, man, I'm, I'm so simple. Yeah. I'm a simple guy. And you see me. I could be a hobo mm -hmm. somewhere in the street being ignored by everybody asking for money. <laughs> you know? Uh, that's me. But no, <laughs> it's something else uh, behind the disguise. And uh, the thing now is that what we bring, uh, we bring it for everybody in the world through the science. And it's test out. It's simple. It's very effective. Yeah. So the, what's the, the benefits then for cold water exposure for people just starting off, getting in a shower or getting in a cold bath or getting into the icy lakes? What's the health benefits? There, uh, there are many benefits. Um, uh, uh, the principle is of cold. A cold shower a day keeps the doctor away. That, that is the simple one. The other one is we have 100,000 kilometers of uh, blood vessels inside. Uh, very primitive ones like capillaries. And then you have arteries and you have veins. They are all connected to the heart. We all know. Killer number one was cardiovascular related diseases in society. Why? Because all the cardiovascular uh, related uh, uh, system and uh, uh, related organs and everything are very bad exercised. They contain millions of little muscles to help the blood flow go through. But because we wear clothes all the time, we destimulate. We have a destimulative kind of behavior, conditioned. So the muscles don't work as much. Who's got to pay for that? Your heart. Your heart needs to pump more to get the blood flow through because the tone of the muscles in the vascular system, that means the mi millions of little muscles, they are not helping as much. So if you go into the cold shower, what happens? These little muscles begin to work. They begin to be stimulated. What happens more if you do this regularly, then the heart rate goes down with 20 to 30 beats a minute, 24 hours a day. And that means that there is no stress anymore. Besides of that, all the little muscles begin to work and help the blood flow, less stress, and the energy, because the vascular uh, system is a transportation system of the blood flow. It reaches much better the cells. And thus you get a lot more nutrients, oxygen, and vitamins into the cells. That means a lot more energy. So much more energy, and much less stress. That's the result of a cold shower a day. Yeah. How you hold the, you hold your breath? You could hold your breath for seven minutes underwater. Is that correct? Yes, yes. But it's not about competition. Yeah. Anybody. If I, 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 my oldest participant is ninety eight years old, she loves it. She loves it so much. She told me. I told it my sister, ninety six years old. And uh, they are doing it. And uh, so many people, all the people, they say, this is the principle of the rabbit. Where all the life you go, until you die, you should be able, like the rabbit, to flee, fight, and to find food. Isn't it? That is normal. What we see now in the elder homes, etc., people stashed away with 20, 25 cans of medicines, in staring in front of a TV, waiting until the agony of death is setting in. What kind of life is that? It's not there. What we should do every day is reminding. I say, die once a day. For, uh, uh, learn to fully live is where the fear of dying, of uh, the quality, the inequality of, of, of living is no longer there. This is what I learned when I swam uh, under the ice. I lost side because my cornea froze i had no goggles on under the ice swimming swimming and suddenly i couldn't see where, where i was going and there was a meter of thick uh, ice beyond i swam i swam i swam i swam twice the uh, twice the record uh, distance and more 113 meters 50 was it uh, at that time the other day I had to do that. It was a piece of cake because I got out alive. Why? I kept on swimming, swimming, trying to find a hole. And then a diver finally, uh, almost swimming, swimming and sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. There I was. Uh, I never had felt the agony of drowning 
being that claustrophobic situation, ice cold water in my breath hold. Uh, no, no fear, no nothing. When I, when they uh, brought me back to the 50 meter hole, the first thing <gasps> you get, where was, where was everybody? But I did it. And there, at that moment, I had a peak, absolute peak into a, a fearless state of being. We don't die. I, I found the way we think about dying, it, it all ends over there, and that's why we have fear. But that's wrong. We have to go deeper to understand that fear is bullshit that we live forever and that we have a purpose here in this life to fulfill the soul itself and to make it understand instead of what we're doing now with the world, uh, serving uh, uh, people who gain too much money and who are abusing, corrupting, polluting the world, uh, uh, the cruelty in the world uh, against animals and people, war zones, disease and all. It is not necessary. It's time for change. And I went into t uh, nature and I found through going into the extremes, following my feeling, my feeling is my guide. Do not force. There is no force needed. Your feeling will show you are capable of so much more. And at least to realize the soul, who you are and what you are. And that is love. It's driven by love. It's a fearless state of being. And that is what I want to teach my children, your children, everyone I love. Mm -hmm. So you have nearly died fighting for this. Oh, a couple belief. of times. Couple of times, yes. Death, like people do fear death, and that's fear is what controls the world. And you don't know what it's like before you're born, so you're not going to know after death. We're, we're constantly searching. I'm you're a searcher, I'm a searcher. I'm at the beginning of my journey. I know I'm going to change the world at some point. I'm, I believe I'm doing the steps to do that. I've yet to find I do what I love, I found my passion. I believe something bigger is going to come. I just need to keep working on myself. When you got scientifically proven, when you eventually said that this man is a is changing lives you broke down you started crying why yes of course it's finally after after 40 years of non not being recognized after 40 years of misery after 40 years carrying your grief alone uh, you get finally a recognition of a world which was always blaspheming me uh, saying that I was an idiot, crazy, and I should uh, yeah, go on, don't uh, stick with your feelings. Uh, uh, it's not important. What is important is to produce, to have a career, to have a position better than somebody else, to gain money and to gain more money, and that's it. So all that was a feeling at that moment that broke down just through those words of that doctor. It's amazing what happened. And I said, something good has happened. Namely, the suppression of my own being went down. And at the same time, I was able, if I'm able to do this, I can bring it on for others. That there is more than meets the eye, and now it's time that it is getting in our sight. Tangible, strong, effectively there. That's my method, that's my mission. And conversations like this brings and sheds light. Was that a right over there? You? Was that a release for you? When all the years of getting cold, oh black, yeah, she all potentially getting verbally <sighs> abused, mentally abused, called crazy. Oh yes. Was that a release to say? Not as if to say, "Fuck you, I told you so." But look what. Oh I've yeah, no, I'm I'm quite humble about that. Uh, uh, only humble about that because I know a lot more people are suffering. And uh, uh, let, let us now give the example. If I can get out, and I'm a simple guy, really. I have no schooling, not really, uh, not, no real schooling. But life has taught me. And now I'm better than anybody and anything. What is that? No, I'm the simple guy. But now I'm freed. I'm freed of my suppression. And I stay simple. I stay humble because what is happening is great. And I want to see in the greatness every day. And this is what I want to share with everybody who is suppressed right now. Mm -hmm. The pineal gland, Wim, 
the seat of the soul, they call it, which is in the middle of the brain, and it gives you like higher powers to certain things. It's cold water. Does this help the pineal gland? Uh, yes, absolutely. Why? Because the adrenal axis uh, will be turned on, and they resets uh, it resets the uh, the, the blood ca uh, chemistry uh, uh, deeply, and it cleanses it. Once it is cleansed, it will take away that what is wrongly built up through uh, acidity, through a long standby of those parts of the brain, uh, then becoming acidic and then becoming petrified, uh, calcified. Fluorified, fluoride. <clears throat> yes, and now through these breathing techniques and going into the cold, you learn to change the biochemistry, make it absolutely alkaline. Then the uh, adrenal axis is activated and they reset the body toward uh, the way Mother Nature meant it to be, that means clean, mm -hmm. cleansed, uh, deeply within the lymphatic uh, uh, system, and also the neural activity at will, all 100% uh, within our brain. That means then the blood flow is uh, able to follow with alkaline blood, and that decalcifies the pineal gland. And then anything that is needed to solve trauma, that is the purpose of uh, dimethyltryptamine, DMT, is able to get uh, to you or, or to whatever needs to be done. The trauma could be an accident, the trauma could be the loss of your wife, your child, this or that. It does not matter. It's there at your will, present to help you. Mm -hmm. Climbing, um, not Ben there, what's the climbing Mount Everest? Yeah. On your shorts by the danger zone. What was the thinking behind this? And did you get scared at any point? I, 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 no, uh, uh, no, no. I remember a couple of things. Uh, of course, uh, the first was, yeah, nobody had done it. Mm -hmm. So you go into the Has unknown. Has that turned you on a bit? But no, it's never been uh, done always, before. Always, <laughs> always, 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 man, always. <laughs> I, I now figured that out with my <laughs> wife. <laughs> uh, that's a joke, guys. <laughs> but uh, the thing, uh, going into the Mount Everest, uh, I, ju I just thought by myself, first they did it with oxygen and clothes. Then, I, uh, then they did it without uh, oxygen, but with clothes. Let me be the one who is doing it without clothes and without uh, oxygen. Just, you know, shorts. And uh, that's what I did. And I went there, and the whole alp alpinistic world was upside down, and a man goes this way, and uh, he is planning to go, uh, and, uh, uh, and I did. What I found on Mount Everest, on uh, the height of six kilometers about, uh, uh, was, a, uh, was me being alone, because I, I was just too fast for the people. I, I'm a very uh, uh, sportive, very athletic, uh, just being with nature, not in sports competition. Nature makes me the, be the best of, of me. And there I had set out with the mindset, I want to do this. So then you got to drive inside. You grow while you go. And ah, I went. But then uh, snow came. And I was there and there is no path. There's only ice and uh, ice, snow, white, uh, it's cold, and that's it. And the rest you have to find out while going. But there I was in a white out suddenly, in my shorts, in a white out uh, on that height with less than half the oxygen. I found the way. I, I didn't feel this paranoia. I didn't feel anxiety. I felt, hey, I'm okay. This, uh, I don't see anything, but I'm okay. I feel okay. I'm connected. I got my drive. I go. I just go. Three hours later, I found myself in the advanced base camp at 6,400 uh, meters. And, uh, uh, and uh, I was received by Tibetans. And they were, I think they have been looking to a person like the Yeti. <laughs> like a pilgrim, like a pilgrim coming out of the whiteout mm -hmm. in his shorts. That uh, they they served me tea and and uh, all those things, and then later that that was the greatest moment on uh, Mount Everest for me, because I found out I had no paranoia, no anxiety while being amidst a whiteout. And uh, that was the greatest yeah. of discovery. Do you think you find yourself more, Wim, when you're with yourself, when you are alone, 
Do you think you find who you really are? Because yes. we surround ourselves with too many people. We've got noise from radio, TV, oh, yeah. social media. Do you think you find your true purpose when you spend more time alone? Yes, of course. But right now, talking to you, we get to insights. We get to a conversation I never had. And it's beautiful. The light which is shining right now between us is beautiful. And the light coming from the neurology of talking this way is, is saying this is common sense and this is going to the deepest. This is giving new insights. We, will, uh, we are helping the people. We are, are like in the tribe and we solve any problem that is coming up in, in this conversation and we will solve it because the nature of our mind is capable of doing that if we only go past our fears. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. So that is nice. That is great. I love it. For the rest, if I feel bullshit, I just go out, I'm sitting 20 minutes or 30 minutes into, into the ice water, then I shut up inside. It shuts up. It's a, and then you are just there. And that's who you are and what you are. Yeah. So going through all that, all the trauma you've been through, all the pain and misery, you're still human. You'll still battle that shit every day. You just handle it better than everybody oh, yeah. else. So yes. going through, you, all the records you've broke, changing the world, proving that everything is within, proving that your belief can change whatever the fuck you're thinking. You can change the way you think, the way you feel, the way you talk, yep. the way you act. If you ain't happy... You can't be happy. You're living proof of that. Many other people yes, are. Yes, man. So going forward for the future, what's plans for Wim Hof? What is other goals that you want to take out? Where's, oh, where's the levels you want I to I want go? this method all over globally. In schools? Uh, in schools. Uh, uh, I want uh, uh, children to teach, to be taught happiness, strength, and health. No more only the bullshit, how to fit in in a society that is sodomizing the planet. It's going to be over. It's inequality going on, and it's ruling us. A, a system, a hierarchy, where a couple of people uh, 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 are earning 10,000 times more than somebody else. What makes them, a one person and the other, to have 10 times, uh, uh, 10,000 times more needed than this person? That is a system that doesn't work. It doesn't, they are not brighter or anything. They are just sneaky, able to manipulate that system in a way that it all comes to. And where is the energy coming from? From all those. Because there is no more energy than the amount of people in the world. That's logic. Mm -hmm. And so that re is represented into money. Money is only a symbol of what is the energy in all the people. And that's why we have poverty. That's why we have starvation, because we are thieves, the, 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 the guys who are ruling over us. And those are the criminals. And they, those people, they, uh, they kill, and nobody sees it. But we are going to open it, uh, those eyes. If I have a mission, it's not me anymore. I don't need to play with the Mount Everest no more to see what I'm capable of. Now I will use my mind and my heart to bring justice to the world through the schooling where children get to learn about happiness, strength, and health to never lose the core of their wealth inside ever anymore. And when it happens in a society, oh, you got to work, you got to do this, you got to do burnouts and autoimmune disease and cancer and shit happens. No, this is what Dave Asprey uh, asked me in his podcast. Wim, I never asked this, but how to reach enlightenment? And I told him, okay. And please put it in one sentence. Hey, shit, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <gasps> they put uh, Bibles, Korans, and all those things. You know, with uh, all these uh, scriptures, I say, uh, keep it simple. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Just be happy, strong, and healthy, because the rest is bullshit. And that bullshit, nobody should be satisfied with in any way not succumb to it not being suppressed it's bullshit it's not yours you are identifying with bullshit and that's why you feel shy and feel timid and uh, others are able to manipulate you because you have no control over your own mind and now we are shown you own your own mind there are uh, we have the tools 
we talk about it like two guys they talk they stand up they say something is wrong here let's find out that is the ability of nature given to us through speech and that's what we do a common sense speech the wise are talking we are leading it because we have no fear we want to solve in the love for all those who are suffering that's what we do so what i'm doing the rest of my life what you are doing as well we bring common sense love back to our families manifest like a rock yeah that's what we do what's your daily routine like one De- begin a start a day with uh <clears throat> with a, a good breathing session because the breathing session it has shown in the university to alkalize the blood that means acidity is out there that means that the performance is going to be a lot better mm-hmm. when uh, the blood is alkaline you it's do logical. this as soon as you're up i read an article that the most the first hour of your day and the last hour of your day is your most creative I also read that tibetan monks and women i think nuns sorry nuns also <sighs> when they done the breathing techniques they wrapped um, wet clothes over them. They done the breathing techniques and visualized themselves drying the clothes. The body temperature went up, and they actually dried. The clothes went dry. Yeah, the yeah. Powerful. Okay. Do you do that first thing in the morning? All, the, or all these things. That, yeah, it, it, we don't need to. Do you uh, visualize uh, when you do it? Yeah, yeah. We, we don't need to go into visualizations and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a big margin. Just do a little bit of breathing. Take the cold shower. And you are a- 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 able to understand the depth of yourself. You get a control over your mood. The mood regulation is done through these breathing techniques and the, uh, and the cold shower. And, I, and at a certain moment, you are able to go uh, and swim in cold, uh, you know, natural bodies of water. Like uh, 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 this swimming pool there, what you see there, mm. that, that one I never use in the summer. I only use it in the winter. And I love it. I love it. And, uh, uh, and, so, and sometimes I go into the lakes and into the rivers because I'm not shy. My condition, condition of my vascular system is just right there. When you are able to take on the cold shower on a regular basis, you are able to take on stress. And that's the world. You want to know how to deal with stress of the world and bacterial stress and viral stress and emotional stress, mental stress, work stress, etc. The congestion, this and that. Learn to handle yourself. Go into the cold shower. Mm-hmm. You learn your psyche to direct to inner, uh, uh, inner power, the adrenal axis activation, becoming strong. While nobody sees something, you ha- are, have the ability to change yourself to become stronger within in a second, yeah. just by thought. And that is uh, done through the cold shower. Going back, cold shower a day keeps the doctor away. And some breathing, deep breathing, makes your body alkaline. Great preparation for much more outcome than normal in the day. How's your eating one? I eat once a day. I didn't eat is until... Is that the five-year yes. thing? Yes. Five-year window? Yeah, yeah, about. Ah, not yeah. even. And, uh, uh, two hours in, uh, is enough. Mm-hmm. Is it vegetarian, vegan? Yes, yeah. it is. So plant-based kind of stuff. Have you ever heard of a thing called sun gazing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that for yeah, 50 I've years for ago. Many years, yeah. So yeah. I lo- watch a lot of stuff about India. People think I'm crazy for doing this, but everything that's grown from this universe, trees, yeah. fruit, veg, yeah. is grown from the sun. Yeah. It's the sun's reserves. Ah. So if you look there you directly go. at the sun, an exactly. hour before sunrise, an hour before sunset, All I can right. look at the sun anytime now. So if you do that, but an hour before sunset, an hour before sunrise, it will align everything back in your body. They say if Amazing. you look at the sun for over half an hour, it will cure you all disease as well. Whoa. They say people can go blind by looking at the sun. That is a myth. Nobody's yeah, ever went yeah. blind by looking at yeah. the sun. But don't look at that. Build up the eyesight. Build up. Yeah, yeah, gradual. At, yeah, gra- like the yeah. ice, cold shivers, like stuff. Gradual, yeah. cold exposure. So, so gradual exposure. Gradual exposure. We touched on that. People look into it. There's many things about it on YouTube about sun gazing. I believe it's powerful as well. It can maybe change lives. But I loved it when yeah. I, I was doing it for hours when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Was doing it, and now still I'm doing. It. I love this sun. Yeah. I, 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 the 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 contact. Uh, with the, the you can see the aura. visual cortex, you can see the aura. Uh, the aura it becomes mm-hmm. blue, yeah, and then uh, you're just feeling it as uh, amazing. And yes, um, vegetarian because the phyto uh, power is still within the plants. It mm-hmm. directly received the sunlight. 
Yeah. So it's there. Mm -hmm. And in animals, it's indirect. Mm -hmm. They eat the, uh, their plants, so they already digested the sun power. Yeah. So we think uh, meat, 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 but meat in the end is very, uh, it needs a lot of processing inside. It's a, it's a wrong diet. It's yeah. a wrong diet. For people watching, man, people whose life has beat them down, maybe lost a loved one, battling depression, maybe got addiction issues, what advice would you give for them? What maybe tools and techniques would you give for them for people to go, do you know what? Because people will watch gotcha. this and it will trigger something in someone's yes. mind and they'll go, fuck it, I want change. Yeah. What advice would you give for them? That, that, first of all, we have shown through science already that we as humans have a much deeper possible control within that the industry, etc., is treating us only with pills and dependency on therapies and, 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 and psychiatry and all that, it's not necessary. You, with your breath, with your, uh, these breathing techniques, and we got a free app for that to uh, show you to have an absolute sense of control you within. Unprecedented much. And then you will feel, a uh, feeling is the understanding once you get to that feeling, then, oh shit, I never felt this. And then you don't need too many words. You want to get rid of the shit. And that shit is going to go. Because you're going to uh, adopt an absolute sense of control. Try out the free app. What's it called? It, it's, uh, I don't know what it is called. It, it, it's on my website. Yeah, the Wim Hof app, And they, yeah. they develop it every month. Uh, possibly the Wim Hof Method app yeah, or yeah, something. yeah. It's, yeah. And uh, uh, I don't use it because I developed it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it's logical, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I tell you, the shit works. Mm -hmm. The shit works and it's good and it's scientifically endorsed. I can talk uh, uh, in English. I can talk in French about it. You know, uh, it, it's, it's good shit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, for the people watching, just get involved with the Wim Hof method. How can, what's your social media and stuff? Just Wim Hof on Instagram, YouTube, yeah. you've got so many videos and documentaries. The one, the very first one I watched was on Vice, was a powerful. Vice, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. That young Vice. boy, just yeah. decent guy. So, plant, so we've moved on to everything for the future. We've touched on a lot of things. Would you like to finish up on anything yourself, brother? Uh, man, just keep on the work and uh, the common sense. Bring it uh, together with your beautiful accent. <laughs> I love the Scots uh, way, you uh -huh. know. In the Highlands, I think we have reached the Highlands here. Yeah, definitely. Wim, for coming Thanks, on man. today, brother, Thanks. and telling Thanks. your story, um, it's very much appreciated. I think what you're doing is phenomenal. I believe you've only just scratched the surface. You've got a lot more to come. Yes. I'll be following your journey till as long as we're on this planet. We anyway. will bring the soul yeah. to everybody mm -hmm. who needs it. So the last question, it. do you still get cold? Yeah, of course. <laughs> but don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. Good. God bless you. Oh, right Take on, care. right on. Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.